the truth. Welcome to The Truth Hurts. This is your host, Sule Prince. Sule Prince. God, that really hurts. Whether you like it or not, sometimes the truth hurts. The truth hurts. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Will set you free. Today, I have a very special guest with me today, Dale Glover. And we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. We are going to discuss the Shroud of Turin. Now, many of you do not probably don't know this topic. You, you probably have heard of it, but never researched it um, deeply. Or you may never have heard of the topic at all whatsoever. Well, we have Dale here um, to help us understand this topic and why it is important. So, Dale, it is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you so much for for having me on, Sully. Uh, the Shroud of Turin is a, a topic that's important to me. It, it had a role uh, as one of the evidences that brought me to faith in Christ. And like you said, not a lot of Christians know much about it. So I, I think it's it's crucial um, to understand that we have this another set of evidence for the resurrection. Amen. Good, good, uh, good thought. Now, let me ask you this uh, question before we actually jump into this topic. What research did you do on this topic, and what were the scholars that helped you come to the position that you're holding today? Yes, yeah, so uh, on this topic, so I did uh, tons of research. So I was first introduced to the Shroud by uh, my friend, Dr. Gary Habermas. Uh, he's he's kind of known for arguing for the Shroud of Turin as a, a, a famous Christian apologist there. And you know, before that, I kind of just dismissed the Shroud as a Roman Catholic relic and that's not for me. I'm a, I'm a proper Bible believing Protestant, you know? So, um, but once I saw that Gary was taking it seriously, I, I kind of uh, watched everything he said about the shroud and, and read some of his papers on the shroud. And I was really impressed with the scientific evidence. And that's what caught my eye is like, wow, th this is credible science, um, you know, in peer reviewed papers and that sort of thing. Um, and there's a legitimate argument for miracles. So, from there, that's where I dived in deep into the research uh, of the scientific evidence for the images. Uh, at one point, Gary Habermas hooked me up with shroud expert Barry Schwartz, who's uh, Jewish. He's not a Christian, but um, he was involved in a scientific team studying the shroud back in 1978. And um, he believes, because of the evidence, that the shroud was authentic. And, uh, you know, he was kind of the key guy. He, he had all the connections with all the scientists. He knew all the papers and stuff like that. So it was through him that I was given direct access from to the primary witnesses, the primary sources. And, uh, yeah, I, I was just impressed. I came in the end, I came to the conclusion this thing is uh, a miraculous image. Oh, OK, that sounds very interesting. So let's jump right in. Sure. Let, let's ask a deep question, because. A lot of people, when they would view uh, the shroud, if they heard anything about it, they kind of connected to the, you know, when the Roman Catholics have these phenomenons where a statue is crying blood. And this is some proof of their belief system. The shroud kind of fit into that category to many people. But to you, you're saying it's deeper and it is what they actually say it is. Yeah, yeah, because I um, the the quality of the evidence is absolutely different. Um, so I've actually studied a little bit into the Eucharistic miracles or these Marian apparitions. I, my friend uh, Caleb Jackson is actually writing a scholarly level uh, book. Uh, it's a two volume book on this and stuff, and he's presented on other podcasts. And there, there's no comparison kind of thing. The, these things, they're first of all, they're not published in peer reviewed science journals, whereas with the Shroud of Turin, the, the research on that front side in things like applied optics or, you know, uh, the Canadian sciences of forensic uh, journal and that sort of thing. So these things are in the, the most famous secular science journals in the world. And that just makes it qualitatively different. I would say you can. Yeah. Great explanation. OK, so tell me, what's the Shroud? What's the Shroud of Turin? And why do you think it's important for us to know about it? Absolutely. So, so the Shroud of Turin is a, uh, a long linen cloth. It's about 14 feet long by three and a half feet wide. And um, essentially, and it has images of both the front side of a man 
and the backside of a man. Okay. And it has various injuries throughout it, various whip-like scourge wounds throughout. Um, there are blood stains, what look to be like uh, nail wounds in the hand, the wrists and the feet with blood flows uh, flowing out of those. And there's also a crown of thorns around the shroud man's head uh, or wounds that are consistent with the crown of thorns. So obviously uh, on the pro shroud side, people are saying, well, this is authentically Jesus's burial shroud. And it looks like these images got on the cloth during the resurrection through a miracle of God. Um, now shroud skeptics on the other hand will say, no, this is just a, a medieval artwork of some kind that, um, you know, is depicting Jesus. Um, so that's what the shroud is. Um, now, why is it important? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, quite obviously, if the pro shroud site is correct, if this it did cover the historical Jesus and there are miraculous images on there, number one, it has immense historical and sentimental value. And that we have the burial cloth Jesus was wrapped in as he died for our sins. And secondly, we have proof of a mer divine miracle associated with Jesus' death and resurrection, which will help to convert unbelievers just as it did me and to strengthen the faith of Christians already who may have doubts. Okay. So, Dale, why do you think when we have these arguments for the historical Jesus and the resurrection and the different arguments they used to show that the resurrection was a historical event that Christians should hold to? Why is the Shroud never one of those arguments to show that um, the resurrection is true? So in a historical context, so I would say sometimes it is, um, you know, so for example, Gary Habermas, he, he just published his scholarly, volume one of his scholarly level um, uh, uh, book on the historical evidence for the resurrection. And he does contain a little blurb about the Shroud of Turin, from a historical perspective, but you are correct that, you know, I, I've never seen the shroud mentioned by William Lane Craig or, you know, Craig Keener or Mike Lacona even, right? So there, there is a hesitancy. And I, I think that's because there's a social stigma uh, surrounding the shroud. Most people have never heard of it. And those who have only see it through the lens of the skeptics. They just assume it's a medieval fake or a Roman Catholic relic. And, so people that come across and say, well, no, actually, the, I'm on the pro shout side. I think it's authentic. We're kind of seen falsely as kooks, as, as you know, not being credible. But, of course, you know, people that think that way, they, they know nothing about the scholarship that's actually available for it. So I, I think that's why, um, you know, most biblical scholars, when they're making a case from the history, uh, they know nothing about really the, the scientific evidence for the shroud. Okay. So you're you're basically saying that this is a topic that we should jump on and grasp to be able to demonstrate the proof of the resurrection and the historicity of Jesus. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, why why on earth would you not want more evidence? So I, I I love you know the minimal facts type approach to proving that the resurrection happened historically. Why not you know have scientific evidence supporting that that additionally proves the same thing uh, the more the merrier when it comes to evidence yeah i'm wondering if um this topic is difficult for many to promote because there's a lot of science involved in it as well so you have to have like a, a sense of a scientific background to be able to show some of the arguments for the shroud would you agree i i think so yeah so it, definitely if you're arguing for a miracle there's there is a lot of science uh involved and there's just no way around that um now i will say this though that um the science of the shroud has been around around for decades now since 1978 at least and okay. some people are better communicators than others and okay. um you know so barry barry schwartz i mentioned him or someone like joe marino these guys are great popularizers i, I wish i had their gift or mm -hmm. same with gary habermas i i you know, so many people have said, like, wow, Gary, when Gary presents this on the Shroud, like, it, it all makes sense. He he does a great job and, and stuff like that. So um, I wish I had their gift for, for being as good of a popular level speaker and stuff. But, yeah, um, I think there is a way to convey the essential scientific case without getting into all the details for, you know, people that are new to it. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you like what you just watched, click the subscribe button. And beside that is the bell icon. Click that. It will notify you of all upcoming videos. Also, if you like this video, click the like button. But if you don't like what you just watched, you don't agree, that's okay. Go into the comments. Leave a comment. Let's dialogue and talk. Thank you.